Today for EMN5, we're going to talk about pediatric EKGs and what we would expect to see on a normal EKG. And what I want you to think during all of this is RV dominant. That's because the babies, when they're in utero, they tend to have this high resistance pulmonary circulation. And this creates a really thick, larger RV and ends up resulting in the EKG changes that we see. So RV dominant. So we're going to have a right axis, large R waves in V1 through V3, the right precordial leads, and T-wave inversions in V1 through 3 that actually last a little later into life. Kids also are going to have a faster heart rate and shorter intervals. Lastly, you might see some other changes like RSR prime in V1 and Q-waves inferiorly and laterally. Okay, so let's start off talking about axis. Adults tend to have an axis that's left-shifted. When kids are born, between one week and mon one month, they're way right-shifted, like I talked about. So they're going to even go over to 180, for example, averaging right around 110. Now, as they grow up, they're going to shift more left back over towards where the adult ranges go. And even by about three years old, are starting to be more in the adult range. So here's an example of a one-week-old normal EKG. And you can see that it has this right axis. We have, we're down in one and we're up in VF, so there's a right axis that's normal for this one week old. But let's take a look at this one. Does this throw any red flags out to you? We're isoelectric in one, and we're actually down in VF. So this seems like it's a left axis, and sure enough, this is an axis of negative 87. This is actually a neonate that has Down syndrome and an AV canal defect. So you can just look at this EKG, and there's something wrong with it. We're not the expected right axis. That should be something you can recognize. All right, so next up is these large R waves in the right precordial leads. We should see these large R waves in V1, V2, V3. All right, let's do another quick example here. So you have this EKG that comes in, three-year-old boy. The S wave is prominent in V1, V2, and we have very large R waves on the left side. And true enough, this is a three-year-old that does have left ventricular hypertrophy. Now, it's a lot more complicated to determine if a patient has left ventricular hypertrophy if they're a child. There's some different equations you're going to have to do, but my goal here is just to tell you red flags to look out for that will prompt you to do more of a workup. Okay, next let's look at these T-wave inversions. We all expect adults should have upright T-waves in V1 through V3, right? If they're not, we're concerned for ischemia. However, in kids, you're actually going to expect T-wave inversion in V1 through V3. Between a week up until about 8 to 12 years old, they should have inverted T-waves. This is just called a juvenile T-wave pattern. It's normal. It's expected. One interesting thing here is actually in the first week of life, you might see an upright T-wave. Let's look at a couple examples. This is a three-day-old. Here's V1 and V2. So we have upright T-waves in V1 and V2. Now this is a week old. We have T-wave inversion in V1 and V2. Here's a four-year-old, so this is inverted throughout. And finally, when we're a teenager, it's starting to flip back up. Okay, so next we have the, the heart rate and the interval. So we know that heart rates are faster in children, but even with that faster heart rate, we see interval shortening. So in PR, in adults, we should expect less than 200 is normal. In infants, almost down to 80, so it's a lot shorter. In adolescents, they're starting to get more into the adult range, 140 to 180. Your rule here is basically an over 140 in infants and toddlers, you'd be thinking that that's abnormal. Now the QRS in adults, we're expecting less than 120 for a narrow complex. And you can see that in neonates, it's quite a bit shorter, 70 to 80. And by the time they're teenagers, they're getting a little bit more up to the adult range. Okay, let's see what we've learned here. So we have a five-week-old, previously healthy, born-term baby coming in with dad, seeing that they're having some mild respiratory distress. No other history. Let's take a look at an EKG and see if this throws any red flags out here for us. So let's go through our expected changes. So we expect a right axis. Let's take a look here. So we're upright in one, and we're about even in AVF. Hmm. So we're not really seeing that right axis deviation. What about our waves in V1 through V3? We do actually see more of an S wave predominance here in V1 through V3 and more R waves in the left lateral lead. And what about our T wave inversions? Mm, this is a five week old. We would actually expect these to be inverted. And lastly, not on our list, what do we see over here? That's ST elevation. This is definitely an abnormal EKG. So there's a lot of red flags on this EKG, and this patient ends up um, being diagnosed at five weeks old with anomalous left coronary artery arising from pulmonary arteries and does have anterolateral infarct and also signs of CHF. So there you go. There's our red flags that we're watching out for. So here's in summary, we're expecting a large RV predominance because of that high resistance pulmonary circulation when they were in utero. 
we expect to see a right axis, large R waves on the right precordial leads, T wave inversions, V1 through V3, and a faster heart rate with shorter intervals. Here's the references, and thanks for joining us on EM in 5.